Psalm 33, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord. We ought to stop right there and that we have the privilege to rejoice in the Lord. It says, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation he looketh upon the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for being a good God. Now, God, you know what we stand in need of. And so, Father, I pray that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. And I pray that you'd rend the mountains and take up your boat in the house of God. I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts. I pray, as Brother Ron's already prayed, if there be any amongst us today lost without God, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for the saints of God this morning, Lord. Uh, I know they're under attack, they're under spiritual attack by the devil. And they're under attack by the world and even their own flesh. And so, God, I pray today you'd revive them. I pray today you would help them. That one that is low, you'd lift. That one that is struggling, you'd help them along. That one that is seeking, they would find. And I pray that Jesus would be glorified in it all. Help us, Lord. Use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're exalted in this psalm to rejoice in the Lord. Can I say, when you look at him, he's easy to rejoice over. In this chapter alone, we find that we can rejoice over his word. You find that in verses 4 through 6. We can rejoice over his wonders. You find that in verses 7 through 12. We can rejoice over his works. You find that in verses 13 through 18. Can I say this psalm reveals that he alone redeems. Yep. He alone rescues. Uh, he alone reconciles uh, us that were lost in sin unto himself. Thank God for the mercy of God. Uh, one writer said, Mercy is tenderness in one's heart to overlook one's injuries or faults. Uh, or treat an, an offender better than he deserves. Uh, is that not what God did for us? Uh, are we not uh, uh, certainly uh, reaping better than we've sowed? Uh, I certainly bless the Lord. Uh, I'm interested in verse number 12 this morning. The first part of verse number 12 said, Blessed 
is the nation whose God is the Lord's. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Can I say that America was founded on the precepts and statutes of the Word of God, and America has been blessed because of that. But can I say America is not what America once was? Can I say that those that occupy the White House and the Congress uh, in America today, and even on the justices of the Supreme Court, are not uh, those that started out there? Uh, we are not uh, a blessed nation today because of what America is doing today. Uh, we are still reaping the blessings of God uh, because of those uh, that once uh, uh, took to heart in America what God says in His Word. Uh, let me read you a little bit about uh, what some of those that stood in places of authority in America have once said. John Adams, who was President of the United States, John Adams, who brought... Uh, 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 the Constitution into reality with Thomas Jefferson, uh, John Adams, who was the first governor of Virginia, John Adams, uh, who uh, 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 was the very one that uh, ensured that we would have separation of church and state, or in other words, uh, religious freedom in America. John Adams said this, uh, Suppose a nation uh, in some distant region uh, should take the Bible for their only law book, uh, and every member should regulate his conduct by the priest precepts there exhibited. Uh, every member would be obliged in conscience uh, to temperance, frugality, and industry, uh, to justice, kindness, and charity towards fellow men, uh, to piety and love, uh, and reverence towards Almighty God. Uh, what a utopia! What a paradise this would be! Uh, I believe John Adams believed the Bible, don't you? Uh, uh, John Hancock, the first signer of the Declaration of Independence, uh, and the one who's got the biggest signature on it, uh, said this, uh, resistance to tyranny becomes the Christian uh, and social duty of each individual. Uh, continue steadfast uh, and with a proper sense uh, of your dependence on God. Uh, nobly defend those rights which heaven gave uh, and no man ought to take for us. Uh, I believe John Hancock knew God, don't you? Uh, even Benjamin Franklin, uh, who was not uh, uh, quoted to be a Bible believer, uh, but Benjamin Franklin said this, uh, Here is my creed. Uh, I believe in one God, the creator of the universe, uh, that he governs it by his providence, uh, that he ought to to be worshipped. Uh, the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, uh, that God governs in the affairs of men. Uh, and if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, uh, it is probable, uh, probable that an empire uh, uh, can rise without his aid. Uh, John Quincy Adams, John's son, uh, John Adams' son said this, uh, the hope of a Christian uh, is inseparable from his faith. Uh, whoever believes in the divine inspiration of the Holy Scriptures uh, must hope that the religion of Jesus uh, shall prevail throughout the earth. Uh, never since the foundation of the world uh, have the prospects of mankind been more encouraging uh, to the hope uh, than they appear to be at this present time. Uh, and may the associated distribution of the Bible uh, proceed and prosper uh, till the Lord uh, shall have made, uh, uh, till the Lord shall have made bear His holy arm uh, in the eyes of all nations uh, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Uh, he quoted Isaiah 52 10. Uh, I'm talking about John Quincy Adam. Uh, I'm talking about a man who was the president of the United States of America was uh, excited about the distribution of the Bible uh, and about the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, how about William Penn uh, uh, the founder of Pennsylvania. This is what he had to say. Uh, he said, I do declare to the whole world uh, that we believe the Scriptures uh, to, con to contain a declaration uh, of the mind and will of God uh, in, uh, uh, and, and to those ages uh, in which they were written, uh, being given forth by the Holy Ghost, uh, moving in the hearts of holy men of God, uh, that they ought also to be read, uh, believed, uh, and fulfilled in our day, uh, being used for reproof and instruction uh, that the man of God may be perfect. Uh, they are a declaration and testimony 
testimony of heavenly things themselves. Uh, and as such, we carry a high respect for them. Uh, we accept them uh, as the words of God himself. Uh, I wonder uh, uh, how he feels about Pennsylvania today. Uh, uh, throw an election uh, uh, full of liberals that hate the Bible. Uh, William Penn loved the Bible. Uh, and he loved God. Uh, how about Roger Sherman, uh, a signer of the Declaration of Independence? Uh, he said this, uh, I believe uh, that there is one only living and true God uh, existing in three persons, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, the same in substance, equal in power and glory, uh, that the Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments uh, are a revelation from God uh, and a complete rule to direct us uh, how we may glorify and enjoy Him, uh, that God has foreordained uh, whatsoever come to pass, so as thereby uh, He is not the author or approver of sin, uh, that He creates all things uh, and preserves and governs all creatures uh, and all their actions uh, in a manner perfectly consistent uh, with the freedom of will and moral agents uh, and the usefulness uh, of means uh, that He made man at first perfectly holy, uh, that man first, uh, that the first man sinned, uh, and as he was the public head of his posterity, uh, that all became sinners in conscience uh, of his first transgression, uh, are wholly indisposed uh, to that which is good and inclined to evil, uh, and on account of sin are liable uh, to all miseries of this life, to death, uh, and to the pains of hell forever. Uh, I'm talking about men that signed the Declaration of Independence, uh, men that were responsible for us having a nation today, uh, hey, uh, men who feared God, uh, and God blessed America because of that. Uh, how about Benjamin Rush, uh, another signer of the Declaration of Independence? Uh, he said if moral precepts alone could have reformed mankind, uh, the mission of the Son of God uh, into all the world would have been unnecessary. Uh, the perfect morality of the gospel rest upon the doctrine uh, which though often convert, uh, controverted uh, has never been refuted. Uh, I mean the vicarious life uh, and death of the Son of God. Uh, hey, Patrick Henry, uh, the ratifier of the U.S. Constitution said this, uh, it cannot be emphasized too strongly uh, or too often uh, that this great nation was founded not by religionists uh, but by Christians, uh, not on religion, religions uh, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, for this very reason, uh, peoples of other faiths uh, have been afforded asylum, uh, prosperity, uh, and freedom of worship here. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, to know uh, our country is a Christian nation. Uh, our country was founded on the principles and oracles of the Word of God uh, and on Jesus Christ. Uh, what a blessing to know that. Uh, but our country uh, uh, pales in comparison is what she once did. Uh, hey, listen, John Jay, listen to this. Uh, the very first chief uh, uh, justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, listen to what he had to say. Uh, by conveying the Bible to people, uh, the circumstance, uh, we certainly do them a most interesting kindness. Uh, we thereby enable them to learn uh, that man was originally created and placed in a state of happiness, uh, but becoming disobedient uh, was subject to the degradation and evils uh, which he and his posterity have since experienced. Uh, the Bible will also, in also inform them uh, that our gracious Creator uh, has provided for us a Redeemer uh, in whom all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, uh, and that this Redeemer has made atonement for the sins of the whole world uh, and thereby reconciling the divine justice uh, with the divine mercy uh, has opened a way uh, for our redemption and salvation uh, and that these inestimable benefits uh, are the free gift and of, and of grace and of the grace of God uh, not of our deserving uh, nor in our power to deserve wow 
what a blessing. Uh, I'm talking about the chief justice, the very first one of the Supreme Court. God give us some justices like that today. Uh, hey, George Washington said it is impossible to rightly govern a nation uh, without God in the Bible. Uh, Henry Clay, that great statesman from Kentucky, said this, uh, 1,800 years ago, uh, 1,800 years have rolled away uh, since the Son of God, our blessed Redeemer, offered himself on Mount Calvary uh, for the salvation of our species. Uh, and more than half of mankind still continues to deny, de deny his divine mission uh, and the truth of his sacred word. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to have a statesman in our uh, 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 government here in Kentucky like that today? Uh, no, we got a governor claims to be a deacon uh, and wanted to shut churches down. Uh, hey, thanks be unto God. We got a God in heaven that's for the church. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled in a case uh, of the Church of the, of the Holy Trinity versus the United States. This is what the Supreme Court said. Our laws and institutions must necessarily be based upon and embody the teachings of the Redeemer of mankind. It is impossible that it should be otherwise. And in the sense to this extent, our civilization and our institutions are emphatically Christian. That's what the Supreme Court said. How come we don't have attorneys today quoting that case when going before on our religious freedoms? It kind of sounds to me like the Supreme Court's already ruled that the church is essential. That everything in America, our schools, our institutions of higher learning, uh, every organization in this country uh, uh, is uh, in debt to the fact that we are Christians. Again, verse 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. There was a time when America was blessed, but today America is cursed. I'm going to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on the fallen state of America. America is not a shadow of what she once was. Just this week, we have somebody sitting in the White House. He might be your president. He's not mine. And not because I didn't vote for him. It was because they can't prove 81 million people did vote for him. There's no way he got more votes than Obama. There's no way. Uh, there's no way. They've proved it in Arizona, but they're too afraid to bring it out. They're proving it in Michigan. They're too afraid to prove it out. They've proved it in Pennsylvania. They're too afraid to bring it out. And they're proving it in Georgia. And they're too afraid to bring it out because they hate Donald Trump that much. And they hate you and I that much. The will of the people is no longer the rule in America you can't convince me that most of the American is for the Black Lives Movement era. You can't convince me that most of Americans are racist. You can't convince me that most of America is for abortion. You can't convince me that most of America is for everything else they're ramming down our throats today. They don't care what we're for. They have their own agenda and they are carrying it out to the nth degree. The fallen state of America. Psalms 917 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. The reason there's hell going on in our streets is America's forgotten God. We've forgotten the Father. We've forgotten the founders. I could have read for hours quotes of founders. And not as old as those men. I could read all the way up to Ronald Reagan of men that have stood and said things about this Bible and about God. But they ignore, just like they ignore real history and they don't teach real history to our children anymore. They ignore the importance of the church and the importance of God in America. They've forgotten the Father. They've forgotten our founders. They've forgotten the fallen. They've forgotten those 18-year-old, 19-year-old, uh, and 20-year-old men that we sent over uh, uh, to Normandy and we've sent over to other parts of the world that bled and died so we could have our freedoms today. 
they've forgotten freedom's mandates. And can I say, in order to live in freedom, you've got to exercise your freedoms. The reason they're taking our freedoms is we haven't exercised them. Uh, we've just listened to everything they've had to say. Well, Fauci said it, it must be true. CNN said it, it must be true. No, in order to have freedom, you've got to exercise them. And they're taking them away little by little every year, and we don't even care. We've forgotten the future that awaits for America. I've been a student of the Bible for 48 years. And can I say, I can find nowhere in Scripture the United States of America. The closest you can find in prophecy, in some of the prophecies of the Old Testament, it talks about uh, uh, the, 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 uh, t the federations of the one world government, and it talks about uh, 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 the lion and its whelps. And can I say, when it's talking about the lioness and her whelps, that lioness is often referred to as England and the countries that branched off England. The best we can find is where a whelp. You'd think the greatest and most powerful nation on earth would somehow find its way in the Bible. But I'm reminded when the Bible talks about great was the fall thereof. That's going to happen to America. Uh, I was listening to the news, which is a rare thing for any, me anymore. I hate to be lied to. I was listening to the news last night, and the commentators on, on the local news was excited, saying gas prices have finally come down 20 cents. Uh, but this time last year, they were a buck and a half lower than what they are right now. But this time a couple years ago, we spent $1.67 a gallon. Oh, and they was upset that one guy that they interviewed wasn't excited about the 20-cent drop. It's still more than we need to be paying. Can I say it's not because gas is now costing that much. It's because they're trying to break America. And they will. Because America will never line up with a one world government and submit to the Antichrist until America ceases to exist. Can I say, in the fall of America, America has fallen because America has become sinful. Alexis de Tocqueville, a French statement, once came to America. And he looked at all that America has to offer. He went into all the factories. He went into all that uh, uh, the politicians had to show him. And he saw everything. And he went back to France and he said this. He said, uh, I, I saw their matchless constitution. I saw their industry. I saw everything. He said, but it wasn't until I went into the churches and heard righteousness being blazed and flamed from the pulpits. Uh, he realized I'm, America is great because America is good. He said, when America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. And can I say, America's become sinful. Now, you might want to buckle up, Buttercup. I'm not going to be politically correct right here. Isaiah says in chapter 1, verse number 4, All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, uh, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. Can I say, America is sinful. And can I say, I'm not just talking about Washington, D.C., I'm talking about Main Street. America is sinful. Can I say, America is sinful in adultery. There was once a time when a, a, a reunion between a husband and a wife was considered a holy union. Can I say, uh, uh, it was an institution ordained of God, uh, the home. Uh, and can I say, he instituted the home before he instituted the church. Uh, no wonder uh, uh, the world and no wonder uh, uh, the devil himself has attacked the home the way he has. Uh, uh, can I say, as we sit here today uh, uh, in America, uh, uh, three, uh, three years into marriage, in most uh, uh, marriages in America, 60% of them ended in divorce. Uh, uh, can I say Jesus said the last days uh, would be like Noah. They'd be given in marriage. Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, we live in a day where folks swap off wives like they swap off uh, uh, shoes. Uh, uh, we live in an adulterous nation. Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, 
listen, uh, uh, not only in divorce, uh, we live in a nation now that has no problem with shacking up uh, and trying somebody out for a while. Uh, like it's a used car driver uh, to see if you want to stay with them. Uh, hey, uh, I know that's not popular, but shacking up uh, is still fornication uh, and it's still a sin uh, and it's a, a, a demise on America. Uh, hey, uh, uh, we live in a sex crazed country. Uh, uh, hey, we're at uh, uh, the embodiment of the philosophy of Satan. Uh, if it feels good, do it. Uh, reigns in our lives. Uh, hey, uh, a lot of kids uh, are living in a home uh, with kids from another home. Uh, there's their kids and our kids uh, and somebody else's kids. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we got foster care system going crazy because people don't even want their kids. Uh, we got grandmas and grandpas raising children uh, uh, because of the sins of their children. Uh, listen, America's sinful today. It's the will of God for a man and a woman to join once one another, uh, leave husband and wife, and stay that will t that way till death separates them. Uh, and I say uh, it was ordained of God. Uh, that that home produced children, those children uh, to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord uh, because children are a heritage of the Lord. Uh, they're precious to God. Uh, they ought to be precious in a home. Uh, it doesn't take a village to raise a child, Hillary Clinton. Uh, it takes a mom and a daddy to raise a child. Uh, hey! Uh, and we've run from that. Uh, America, my dear friend, is sinful and adultery. America has been sent upon the assassination of some 62 million babies in the womb. And can I say, thanks be unto God, uh, like him or not, Trump uh, 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 put some Supreme Court justices on there uh, that finally overturned Roe versus Wade. Uh, and contrary to what you hear, that does not mean abortion's been uh, done away with. Uh, it means it's been kicked back to the states. Uh, and thanks be unto God, uh, uh, we got a conservative uh, uh, cabinet here in Kentucky that already had the provisions. Uh, uh, the moment that law was overturned uh, in Kentucky, uh, uh, they kicked in, uh, and abortion is illegal in Kentucky. Uh, I I think there's still two clinics in Louisville and they should be shut down before the end of the year. Uh, but I'm here to tell you it did not end abortion. Uh, we got a wicked president. Uh, we got wicked uh, uh, congressmen and women. Uh, uh, we've got folks uh, who want to uh, see that continue. Uh, uh, they're all about population control. Uh, uh, it won't be long they want to kill grandma at the nursing home because uh, Social Security's bankrupt uh, and they want to control how many children come to this world uh, all these heifers marching on Washington this week proclaiming their right to their, their body their choice They're, they do have a choice with their body they don't have to shack up with a man they don't have to have relations with a man uh, they don't have to get pregnant uh, they choose to do that uh, and there are consequences for our choices uh most of them they show on the news ain't a man wants to be with them anyway. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Most of them are nothing more than dykes. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. And they've all been paid off. They've been paid off by lobbyists to go in March. Uh, and the news media is always real close on them. They don't show. They say thousands marched. Uh, they said that in Cincinnati. And they panned out. There's about 25 people there. And they's all ugly and didn't have any teeth. America's paying for every baby they've aborted. God's not mocked. He had not winked at sin. And I say, America's sinful in abominations. An abomination is something that is loathsome and detestable to God. It's worse than sin, and He hates sin, and He's angry with the wicked every day. But these are things that absolutely disgust God and makes God repent that he even made man. There's several of them mentioned in the Bible. I'll just mention one. It's still in the Bible. Leviticus 18.22 Thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. That's pretty clear. Let me help you something. God made Adam and Eve. Didn't make Adam and Steve. 
He didn't make Eve and, and Rosie O'Donnell. Huh? You can't take Rosie and Eve and come up with little Johnny. You can't take Adam and Steve and have little Betty. And now, because folks don't want their children, there's so many in the foster cares, they've allowed the homosexual crowd to, uh, to even adopt children. And what do you think they're indoctrinating them kids in? It's wicked in the eyes of God. I don't know why every TV show and every commercial and every business is bowed down and catered to them. They're, they're showing it. They're promoting it. They're promoting it. Every statistic I see, it's still less than 2% of the population of America has chose to go down that lifestyle. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, 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 I do not mean to be ugly, uh, but I'm tired of looking at it. Uh, I'm tired of it being forced on me. Uh, it makes me sick. Uh, it makes God sick. Uh, it's not natural. It's not normal. It's weird. Wicked, and it's out of the pits of hell, uh, and hey, it's ruining America. I remind you, every nation throughout history that has embraced and openly accepted that lifestyle has come to an abrupt end. Mm. And listen, all this choose your gender that was chosen when you come out of the womb. I saw on the news Friday night. I don't even know what to call it, so I'll call it it. There's a woman transgendering to a man. I want to tell you something. It is wicked, and it is of the devil for somebody to mutilate themselves. Matter of fact, if you go see the battle of uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel, one of the things those demon-possessed prophets of Baal did is they cut themselves. Uh, they were mutilating themselves. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, that pleases Satan, uh, but it's against God. Uh, and listen, uh, uh, this it uh, was at uh, a campground uh, and uh, uh, went into the woman's bas bathroom, transgendering into male. Uh, I mean, sounded like a man, looked like a man, didn't have an Adam's act. Uh, 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 but was transgender, uh, 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 drugged up on hormones uh, uh, to make it look like a man, but he still had all the female parts. Imagine that. Uh, uh, went into the woman's bathroom. A lady in there uh, uh, said, what are you doing in here? Uh, and he said, I'm a woman. Didn't sound like a woman. Didn't look like a woman. Said, I'm a woman, but I'm transgendering. Uh, uh, she went out and told her husband. He got a couple good redneck buddies. Uh, when that fella come out of John, uh, uh, listen, they worked him over pretty good. Uh, hey, the cops were called. Uh, hey, that it uh, was drunk and disorderly. Uh, caused the scene with the cops, uh, demanding his rights. Uh, and the cops tried to calm him down, and he wouldn't calm down, so they arrested him. Uh, hey, now he's on the news, uh, uh, crying for injustice. Uh, hey, the way I look at it, he got exactly what he deserved. Uh, hey, but listen, uh, hey, uh, uh, you let a man or something looks like a man go in the bathroom with my daughter's in there. Uh, she comes out and tells me, look and see what happens to that joker too. Uh, hey, uh, listen, America's gotten wicked and evil. Uh, and I was mentioning the other day, so many kids have told me at school now, uh, kids are identifying as a dog and a cat, wearing leashes and tails off their britches. And the cat people are crying for litter boxes in the bathroom. I'm here to tell you, that's sick if you're a parent your kid says that they're a dog take them out back uh, cut a switch off a tree uh, and light them up uh, uh, their brains divorce them for non-support uh, uh, they're not a dog uh, they're not a cat uh, hey they've been created in the image of God and they should glorify him in it and these kids I, I talk, listen if I was one of you parents thankfully mine are grown I was one of you parents. I'm probably going to write a letter to the superintendent of schools here in Boone County because it's eating me up. But if I was you, I'd start writing letters to the superintendent, writing the letters to the principals of your school, telling them this is asinine. Uh, they went to college long enough to figure out uh, that's stupid. Uh, and if a kid is insistent uh, on being a cat or a dog, send them to a kennel, uh, make them eat dog food. Uh, uh, don't let them go to school and act like that. Why should our kids... Uh, have to tolerate and accept that junk uh, when they won't let our kids carry a Bible uh, and preach the gospel in the church. Mm. And
and the superintendent probably hearing something to that extent. Yeah. Uh, so some of you parents need to have my back. You need to be, you need to be contacting them. Say, my tax dollars are being spent paying your salary. You straighten up or we're going to call uh, uh, Daniel Cameron and Attorney General's office and see about getting you fired. Because you're a moron. Yeah. Uh, I've met Daniel Cameron. He's a good fella. He's a, he claims to be a Christian. Everything I've seen out of him, he loves the Bible and loves the Lord. And I know he thinks it's stupid, huh? Talking about America's absolutely lost its mind. We're sinful. We've been given abominations and adultery and, and assassinating babies. America's sinful. Look at all the alcohol and drug consumption. Huh? We can talk about America being a Christian nation all you want. You know uh, America produces and consumes more booze than anybody else? And that's saying something with the French and the Germans. Uh, do you know America uh, is hooked on drugs worse than any nation in the world? Do you know we've got a, an administration uh, that is openly knowing, letting our borders be crossed by drug uh, uh, runners every day, knowing they're bringing fentanyl and who knows what into this country, uh, and they're sanctioning it because uh, they want people hooked, uh, because people that are hooked uh, don't work, uh, and if they don't work, they got to depend on the government, uh, and they want the government to control their lives. Uh, we live in a country it's gone insane but it's not only it's not only heroin it's not only uh, fentanyl it's not only meth it's not only pot uh, and all that uh, hey there's a lot of folks sitting in churches hooked on prescription drugs mm. you say I'm not hooked well give it up now, I'm not talking about your blood pressure medicine I don't want you to have a stroke uh, but I'm talking about you're hooked on stuff that controls you pain medicine, all kinds of things mm, that you probably don't really need. There's a lot of doctors been sued and going to jail because they've knowingly got people hooked on that junk. Mm, you're welcome. That wasn't even in my notes. Well, America's hooked on everything but Jesus. America's sinful. Can I say... America's sinful because America adores man and not God. We've even got TV shows called American Idol. Hollywood has been nothing but a glamorous thing that's always tried to make people aspire to be like those people. They paint them up and they look so pretty and they sound so intelligent, but every one of them's been divorced 8, 10, 12 times. Every one of them's hooked on something. Every one of them's a mess. They don't show you the backside of the billboard, do they? You know what the Bible says? Romans chapter 1 and verse number 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that, that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. Uh, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God uh, into an image made like to, uh, to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And I say America's fallen because America's sinful. I know this preaching isn't popular, but this is what it's going to take if America's ever going to get back on track. People don't know it's a sin until they're told so. A lot of them, when they're told so, they don't like it. Well, you judging me, you judging me. No, the Bible's done judged you. I'm just trying to help you. Because I don't want to see you stay in your sin. Can I say, in America, it's not only sinful, America's become soft. This is a pet peeve of mine. What happened to men? You know, there's been a campaign for 25 years in America to demasculate the male, yep. make them sissies, yeah. uh, wear skinny jeans. Yeah. Uh, if you're a foster, you don't wear anything skinny. I do have to confess. Can I confess something? <laughs> Shut up, Phil. <laughs> Y'all know back when, I don't know, when was it? It was May when I went to... D.C. preached for Brother Wheeler. 
And I was just up there to finish out the revival, and 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 it was only up there a couple of days, so I wore a pair pair of khakis and and uh, and and a polo shirt on the plane. I took my suits and and I got up there and and gone around a little bit for a couple of days. And the only casual pants I had was those khakis. <clears throat> Kids close your ears, but. In order to carry a weapon, I have to get a pant size a couple inches bigger because I carry my weapon inside my pants. Well, when you're in D.C., you can't carry a weapon. When you're on a plane, you can't carry a weapon. You can take a weapon, but it's a big hassle, so I left my weapons at home. So I, I'm there, but I took the wrong pair of khakis. I took the weapon <laughs> khakis and not the actual cap khakis. You know what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you go to a tailor and they're, they're fitting you for a pair of slacks, if you just put your fist inside your pant waist, they know what you're doing. They know you're going to carry a weapon. Well, I had weaponless khakis. <laughs> and by the time I got the belt tight enough for them to stay up, I looked like Jethro Bodine with a rope. <laughs> so not far from the hotel Brother Wheeler had me was a shopping mall, and over there they had one of them, uh, what, what's that fancy store starts with an N. I got one up in Kenwood. Nordstrom. Nordstrom. They had a Nordstrom Rack store. Nordstrom Rack, brother, is a good deal. That's where they take all that high dollar stuff and they put it down there folks like you and I can afford. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in there. I'm thinking, Lord have mercy. I'd like to get a pair of blue jeans to wear home that fit me. Well, they didn't have a whole lot of blue jeans in my sight, but, but, but I mean, they had high dollar. I'm talking about $150, $175 blue jeans and they had them for like $14. I'm thinking, so, hallelujah, glory, found a pair of my size. Got them. Well, I'm flying home early the next morning. I'm thinking, I'm wearing them blue jeans on the plane. I am not dealing with these big old baggy khaki pants anymore. So I get there. I mean, I've got everything packed. I go to put my blue jeans on because i got to go and go hit the airport. They were skinny jeans. <laughs> they fit good in the fat part. But them ankle part, man... They look like them things Nas does. What do you do? Nas got a sewing machine. He makes his pants real skinny at the ankles. When you're old and fat like me, you don't want nothing skinny. You know what I'm saying? But I already had my khakis packed and all that. I'm running a little late, so I'm Miss Ned. I called when I, uh, when I made my first layover. She, she said, how's it going? I said, pretty good, but I got, I got to confess something. Don't tell Christian. But I got to... Say, what'd you do with them skinny jeans? I took them off and I got home and ain't seen them since. That's what I did. But there are people knowingly want that junk. Because they want to be sissies. You know what I'm saying? We've gotten so soft in America. Y'all realize, if you've got a kid and you buy him a helmet to ride his bicycle with, you're making him a sissy. Everybody knows once you've wrecked that bike a few times into a couple trees, it helps you out. You learn not to wreck it no more. Huh? Miss Nett and I, was, we came out here to church. I think it was yesterday. We come out here to church uh, for a couple minutes and we, we turned on... Uh, uh, Pleasant Valley, and all of a sudden, here's an older man and woman on bikes, and they had little bike helmets. I thought, what a bunch of sissies. John Wayne didn't wear a helmet unless he was with the Green Berets, and neither am I. Huh? That's stupid. Huh? It is. Now in football, you ain't allowed to tackle. You know why Tom Brady's 44 and still playing in the NFL? Because they're soft. They don't let him hit, let them hit him. I come up, you ever hear a guy named Dick Butkus? Dick Butkus didn't say he wanted to sack the quarterback. He said, I wanted to rip his head off. I've got a picture of him being blocked by four guys and still making the tackle. Now that was a man. That wasn't a sissy. Nowadays, if you hit a guy, you get targeted. You, yeah, I was targeting him. That's the guy I wanted to hit. Uh, we made sissies out of everything. You know why they don't want tackling? It's not about concussions. They want lots of touchdowns. So they don't want anybody to get tackled. 
and they want these uh, superstar quarterbacks to last a long time. So they don't want them hit because it's all about the money. But America's gotten so soft. Everybody is bullied. Did you ever watch Archie, Archie Bunker? You deserve to be bullied. Uh, car seats. What in the world is that for? We either were in the back of the window of the car or on the floor. Now I understand the cars that we had were made of metal. You know, you could hit a tree at 60 miles an hour and not even dent the fender. I mean, you know, it's a whole different ball game now, huh? Uh, we've just gotten so soft. Well, it's for everybody's protection. Have you ever read some of the labels that they put on this stuff? I'm thinking if you're that dumb, you deserve it. We've gotten so soft. It's filtered into our churches. We can't even take preaching anymore. Hmm? Man, I was raised up if the preacher got on your toes, you, you went and repented, and then you hugged his neck and thanked God that he, that he stood and preached the Word of God. Now people get mad and they leave. One of the beauties of our church, you know, we've got folks drive from three states. One of the beauties of our church, they're not one just like us, very close. So, I mean, if you leave, you've got to go somewhere, huh? You probably end up on these little soft, limp wristed preaching churches anyway. Uh, America's got soft. Can I say America's sacrilegious? Oh, everybody talks about God, even Joe Biden. They don't know God. 2 Timothy 3 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. We've gotten to a place where even Baptists are lined up with everybody. Well, they say they're Christian. Well, that don't mean anything. I could tell you I'm, I'm Bill Gates, but look at my bank account. I'm not. Uh, sacrilegious. And all this window-washing crowd and charismatic crowd. And what is it with Baptist churches taking Baptists off the church, uh, getting rock bands, having smoke machines, uh, having a guy give it up and give you a little sermon. Every message is just a little watered-down salvation message and never feed the flock of God, never preach on anything. Why? They want to keep their job. i got news for you. I don't have a job. I have a calling. Mm -mm. And you didn't hire me. God called me here. Mm -hmm. uh, I said this to my Sunday school class. I, I know I'm running long, but hey, I'm having a good time. I worked over at the funeral home yesterday. It was really short. I really didn't have time, but I wanted to help them out. I worked a service yesterday for them. And they brought in a preacher to preach. Well, he called himself a preacher. He called himself a pastor. The guy gets out of his truck and he's got his hair all pulled up in a ponytail goes about halfway down his back he didn't carry a Bible he had a little notebook come in and called himself pastor whatever I'm thinking yeah you're left over from the 70's peace and love man uh, that's what I was thinking he got up and he told those people that Jesus didn't resurrect Lazarus from the dead he resuscitated him that's why he was there four days and four nights to prove he was dead Jesus didn't go get one of them electric defibrillator things and boom brought him back no no Jesus called him forth Lazarus come forth and he come up out of the grave still wrapped up in the grave clothes by the way and Jesus said loose him let him I'm telling you that's where we are in this world they've changed and watered down the Bible and the Bible message so much that they let anybody preach it and all they're doing is making people twofold the child of hell. America's sinful because America's sacrilegious. I done read to you the founder said this was a Christian nation founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. This isn't a come as you are nation. But can I say because of the freedoms that we have, they do have the freedom to do whatever they want to do. You can choose to be wrong if you want to. I'll just stick with the truth. Can I say America's become seared? 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, which is where we are, some shall depart from the faith, and they have, given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Verse 2 is very important. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. 
There's a lot of people that have done things against the Bible, but they've convinced themselves they're okay. They're seared. That's why you can look at some of this crowd that's abominable and tell them they're wicked and not right with God, and they'll absolutely berate you because they have convinced themselves they're right. Their conscience had been seared. The mind is a powerful thing. You believe something long enough, or you think about something long enough, you'll believe it. Hmm. Hmm. It doesn't make it true. And it's obvious that a lot of people don't have mirrors in their homes anymore, the way they go out in public. But they've seared their conscience to the fact they think they look good. Huh? I want to tell you something. If you're this big and you're wearing something this big, you don't look good. I don't care. I don't care how much you paid for it. it, it it's, not a, it's not a pretty sight. And I'm tired of hearing folks saying, the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord, but if you can't carry the tune in the bucket, it's not joyful. Hmm. Did you not read in our text it said to practice skillfully? Hmm. Uh, it didn't say it sounded like, sound like a cat at midnight, you know. It, it, you know. Some of you, it's good the only time you sing is in the shower. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm singing unto the Lord. Good, do it. That don't mean I have to listen. Say, preacher, you're not very nice. Oh, well. Can I say this about America? America's become spoiled. We're spoiled by prosperity. We've had it too good too long. We have. I remember when Jimmy Carter was president. Anybody remember that? I'm starting to get flashbacks now with this joker we got. Still not as bad. I remember... Grown men would wait an hour just to fill out an application and get a job at Wendy's because all the factories had shut down. I remember those days. I remember when the prime lending rate got to 24.5. Some of you are whining about 6%. Wait till it gets 15. I remember those days. There's a big, big comparison. There were both Democrats in the office. But can I say this? I remember when it was a big deal. I mean a big deal. You'd almost pull over to look at it if you saw Mercedes Benz. Now we got a dealership about five minutes from Peter's house. There's four in my neighborhood, and trust me, I'm just a step up from the trailer parks. Are you listening? I mean, there's Mercedes everywhere now. I'm telling you, America's prospered. Hmm? Listen. Prosperity has ruined America. America spoiled because of peace. It's been too long since we really worried about if our nation was going to be overthrown. Now, I know we had Afghanistan, and Afghanistan, like Vietnam, was a political war. And I know some of you, especially Clinton, Rodna, you had some very big concerns with Zach over there because Zach was in the heat of it. Stuff you don't even know about. And there's been some who've served in very, very hot zones. But as a nation, the only time we know about is on the news. And I've still yet to realize, whatever happened to Ukraine? I mean, that's all we heard for weeks. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Sent them a bunch of money. Now we don't hear about them anymore. Could it be because the truth about the vaccine was coming out at the same time? We've been spoiled by pleasures. America is entertainment crazy. We're sports crazy. It's all about sports. Should be all about Jesus. America has become slothful. Amos 6 1. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. I saw a man interviewed the other day, said they keep hiring people. They go through the interview process, hire people, and the people never show up to work. People don't want to work. Miss Annette sees patients all the time, young men, young women, late teens, early 20s. Ask them if they're going to college. No. You got a job? No. Got a driver's license? No. What are you doing? <coughs> I like playing video games. That is such a crazy, they now give scholarships to kids to college to play video games. Mm. 
America has become couch potatoes central. We're slothful. People don't want to work. We have kids starting out that want everything mom and dad's worked for for 30, 40 years. They want to enter into workforce, make 25, 30 bucks an hour, full benefits and everything without having to earn it. We're talking about America's become slothful, spoiled. And it's all because churches have become silent. Churches are no longer interested in publishing the gospel. Churches are no longer interested in preparing folks for the second coming. And churches are no longer interested in preaching on hell. Because we might upset or offend people. I'd rather offend them and get right with God than never say nothing and them die and go to hell. I'd rather offend them and they know what their fate is. And if they do die and go to hell, that their blood won't be required at my hands. I know I've been long, but I said all that to say this. The only hope for America is found in repentance and revival. I'm talking about in our local churches. God still seeking to save that which is lost. And he's still longing to revive his people. The reason we don't have true revival. I haven't had it in over 100 years, going on 150 years now in America. It's because we don't want revival. Because much of what I have preached about, we've allowed to influence us, our homes, and our lives, and we don't want to do what it takes to have revival. Repent, turn from our wicked ways, and ask God to have mercy on us. How can we expect sinners to get saved when the saints won't even repent and get right with God? God help us to realize America's fallen and we may be the only ones that can offer any hope or solution for America. Churches like ours across this country hold the key America having some hope God help us get right be right and point others to Christ while we still are afforded the opportunity let's all stand Brother Clint come get a song of invitation well, he's coming let's have a word of prayer Father we bless you thank you for helping us today Lord Lord I know I said a lot of rough things God, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. God, we want to please you. Lord, we want to expose sin and the devil and warn people to run from it. Lord, you've entrusted us with some young people around here. and God, we don't want them to fall prey to the snares of the devil. To realize and recognize sin when it shows up. God, I pray you do work in people's hearts and lives around here today Lord I know there are folks here today whose families are touched with some of the sins that we brought out God I pray you'd help them be a light to their family members God I know you save homosexuals if they've not been turned over to reprobate mind Paul wrote there to the church of Corinth nor the effeminate which were some of you God you'll save homosexuals and God you'll save adulterers and fornicators and God you'll save murderers you'll save anybody stooped in sin if they're willing to repent and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on Him. God, I pray for somebody here today lost. Lord, you convict them through cords of love, draw them to an altar of repentance. I pray for the people of God. We get serious about serving God. We started this service this morning. Brother Clint Ask you for that. We just get serious about the things of God. God, we need a meet. We need revival. Break it out in our hearts and break it out in our services. We'll bless you for it. Bless this time of invitation. Get glory to your name. We'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.